It's been a tough year for Corpus Solo and the Ottawa Senators as a whole. They had given up a goal on the first or second shot of the game 20 times this season and had done it in their last three games in a row. And with a 4-3 loss to New Jersey on Saturday night, they were officially eliminated from the playoffs. But there might just be a light at the end of the tunnel. Having said that, coming into last night's matchup against the Capitals, it was yet another rough start. Milano to the front and almost getting scored on on the opening shot again, but it's Chikrin saving a goal to avoid that. Shortly after, it was Lapierre for Milano, and there it is, the first official shot of the game, and they didn't get scored on. But Milano again to Lapierre, and they scored. <laughs> Tic-tac-toe, it's Pacioretty in front with his fourth of the year, and it was on the second shot of the game. That's now four games in a row and 21 times this season. But I mean, what is Corpusalo supposed to do here? Well, I don't know if it was a sign or if Corpusalo is just the chosen one and chosen for what, I'm not sure, but this was insane. In the middle of play, Corpusalo was suddenly blinded by the sun at an indoor hockey game, and I can honestly say, I have never seen this. He was trying everything to get their attention and stop play and finally they did because it appeared the solar eclipse had come a day early and you honestly can't make this stuff up. He looks at the official like dude I can't see. So he came over and needing to hold his hand up I think it was all but confirmed that yeah that's not right. And I love this shot. All the players now staring up at it, and didn't anyone tell them you're supposed to wear special glasses? I was about ready for Kachuk to start freaking out and trying to fight the sun or something. Now, this was a 6 p.m. start, so I guess the sun just perfectly shot through the open curtains as fans were taking their seats. Ultimately, the curtain just needed to be closed. Either that or the Capitals, desperate for points, discovered a new level to home ice advantage. But busted, they had to close it as Corpus Solo was on it. All the while though, look over here, the lettering from an ad on the boards was peeling at the same time. They tried to fix it, but eventually just decided to rip it off to keep play going, but Capital One Arena, what is happening? Just a wild sequence. Now, as for the rest of the period, it was pretty lackluster. Just nine shots for both teams combined. And right at the end, Kelly with a hit on Sandine right at the horn caused a bit of a scuffle to end the period, as penalties were handed out heading into the second. Castellet got a double minor, while Wilson got two, which meant the Capitals started the period up a man. Having said that, it didn't result in much early, but a Joseph trip on the penalty kill meant they now got a two-man advantage. And even that, though, resulted in nothing, as the Sens gave up just three shots total. And so, going the other way, on the rush, it's Chikrin for Kastelik, and with all the room in the world, he scored. It's a pretty backhander to beat Lindgren glove side, and just like that, we had a tied hockey game. Now, from here, it was anyone's game. The Caps were ringing it off the iron, then the Sens the other way as they came close, Joseph with a little toe drag, but they just can't beat a sprawling netminder. And so, the final three minutes now, Van Reem Dyke on that rebound and there it is Protus picking up the juicy rebound with a sixth of the year to regain the lead heading into the third period where both teams had several great chances and both teams were ringing it off the iron again but with nine to go the Sens with pressure and they draw a penalty McMichael called for the high stick would put the Sens on the power play and while it wasn't exactly a great power play the Caps not letting them in the zone just as the penalty expired some nice pass and they score. Pinto for Greg in the bumper position and the Senators had tied it up again. Or did they? The Caps taking a look at it, call a timeout because they think they may have seen something and was it goalie interference with Joseph in front? Or there was also a chance they were looking at it being offside as that was close too, but after plenty of debate, they decided to not take the gamble. And while both teams would have chances late, the goalies stood tall, so with regulation ending, we got over overtime where it didn't last long just 40 seconds in Sanderson from long range and he scores a screen Lindgren can't pick it up gets beat glove side as the Senators come into Washington and steal a point from the Capitals that they desperately needed but yeah that's about it for this one let me know if you've ever seen anything like this I'm sure it's got to have happened at some point in the earlier days but thank you guys so much for watching I appreciate it very much and I'll see you in the next one